Okay, let's talk about spring. So, uh, really, I don't want to cover everything. I want to talk about the numerical calculation. So let me just go through this first part. That's a spring. That's a picture of a spring, just in case you couldn't tell. Okay, so this is something you're going to do in lab. This is going to be, uh, as you stretch the spring, you can get the spring constant. I don't really want to talk about that, uh, except to say that the force due to a spring is proportional to some constant times the stretch, k times s. In this case, for this particular spring, I found k is 5.3, but your spring is going to be different. Uh, also, this is a mass on a spring oscillating. So you can see here that we can get a relationship for the oscillation too. Again, you're going to do this experimentally. So I don't really want to talk about that. Okay, how do we model a mass on a spring? I'm going to show you two ways. I don't know what you cover in lecture class, so this is going to be both ways. Let's look at this first gray box. This is probably what you're going to do. This is Newton's second law. So this says that the net force, the vector net force, on some object, like the mass, is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration vector. Uh, you could write it like this. Acceleration is F net over M. That just solves for A. Now, from before, we calculated the velocity update formula. So this is kind of our little recipe here. We're going to calculate the force on the mass, use that to find the acceleration, and then use the acceleration to find the new velocity. Uh, in the last time we did a numerical calculation, the acceleration was one thing. It never changed. But now it's going to change. So we can do these first two steps in our loop for our numerical calculation. Okay, this is the way I like it better, using the momentum principle. It's technically the same thing at this level. So here, let's just skip to this line. This says the net force is the change in momentum over the change in time, where momentum is mass and velocity. So I can do the momentum update formula. So here, based on this uh, delta P over delta T, solving for P2, P1 plus F net delta T, and then I can calculate the velocity to find the position. Okay, so those are the two basic ideas. We're, this is what we've done before. We're just adding another step in our numerical calculation. Okay, so here's my spring right there. Uh, I have two forces on it. The spring's pulling up, gravity's pulling down. So I can deal with this just in the y direction. So in the y direction, I have F spring is pulling up, gravity's pulling down. Uh, I can I know the value if I take equilibrium position to be at y equals zero, then I can get the force is just k times the y position. So this is my net force right here, F net Y. I, I can calculate, if I know the Y position, I can calculate the force. Now, I can update, once I know the force, I can find the new momentum. So I can use momentum update formula, and then I can use position update formula. Notice here that I have P over M times delta T. That's because P over M is the velocity. So this is still the position update formula, but we're using uh, P over M instead of the velocity. Okay, so here is part of the code, and I'll give you a link to this too. And it's not, if you run this, it won't work. Okay, so this is a start. First, line one, this makes a graph. Line two, K is the spring constant, M is the mass, G is the gravitational constant. Those are just things, this is my spring constant. You would probably have a different mass, a different spring constant. If you're on Earth, you're going to still use G equals 9.8. Okay, if you don't pull the mass down, it may not oscillate. So I pulled it down. I put it at some initial value of 30, 33 centimeters down. That's It doesn't really matter, though. Uh, you have to start off with an initial momentum. I'm going to say it starts from rest. T is 0. DT is 0 0.01. Okay, I'm going to run it for 5 seconds. First, I'm going to calculate the force. I left this part blank. You need to put that in there. From the force, I, apparently I'm doing this the other way. So you need to, actually this should say V. Line ch Change line 8 to V equals 0, since I'm using Newton's second law. Now here, I need to update in line 15. I need to update the velocity. In line 16, I update the position. In line 17, I update the time. I showed that for you. 
In line 18, I add a point to the graph. So you just need to fill in. You need to change line 8. You need to fill in line 13, 15, 16, and you should get it to run. And that's what you, what it will, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. If you ran it, if you fill it in, you should get something that looks like this. Okay, so this is the y position as a function of time. This shows an oscillating mass. Uh, you can get the period by looking at the time it takes to go from the start back to there. And this, in this case, I get about the same period as I measured experimentally. So that's a good thing. Um, but this is what you want to try. You want to try to model the mass on the spring. Okay, so hopefully that will help you get started.